Why do we play games that we hate? Toulouse, France, 1969. A plane is about to take flight, but this isn't just any normal plane. This is the final form of planes, the future of airway travel. This is the Concorde, engineered and manufactured by the French-owned Sud Aviation and the British Aircraft Corporation. An aircraft that boasts a top... Look at this. This thing looks stupid. The little beak thing. That thing looks so dumb. Bro, this is the best plane they could make. Speed over twice the speed of sound. This thing can make a flight from London to New York in only three hours, a feat that takes most commercial Wait. airliners nowadays over seven hours. Wait, what the fuck? What? That's insane. You didn't know? No, I didn't. I thought, dude, I thought this would take, I thought this would be like 12 hours. It's not stupid anymore, guys. Yeah, it's, is it because of the beak? That's it? And if you're thinking, that's odd. This was over 50 years ago. Yeah. How is that possible? then you might have realized that this story does not exactly have a happy ending. The Concorde, a beast as oh, uh -oh. was, had a beast's appetite. Because of an uncanny fuel consumption, engineering challenges requiring high maintenance costs given that uh -huh. it flies twice the fucking speed of sound, made the upkeep and upfront costs of this thing astronomical. Right. The initial estimates to build and maintain one were already outlandish, but the the nine billion dollar that's a lot yeah that's a lot of money what the fuck yeah it's dumb again yeah this plane's stupid the actual costs were almost laughable at around six times oh my the god estimate. think about how many and because of this as you sell. can imagine trying to sell the concord to airlines was like yeah. trying to sell cuts of filet mignon to mcdonald's in yeah. fact despite several airlines across the globe initially showing interest in purchasing some uh -huh. once all was said and done only air france and british airways bought into their lavish invention, right. insisting that it would in fact be the future of aviation. A grand total of 20 Concords were built, and it was in service for around 27 years until it was finally retired shortly uh -oh. after a tragic crash in the summer of 2000. Financially, what? it left both the UK and France it's astonishingly deep in the hole. The question, yeah, of course, is given. Yeah, it's like because if you're selling a flight, and the flight is let's say a thousand dollars, and you're selling it to two hundred people, that's two hundred thousand dollars, and the plane costs one point or sorry nine billion dollars. How many flights do you have to do? That's a lot. All of them, yeah. And complete lack of profitability. Why did its creators insist on going through with it? Uh -huh. As marvelous as it was, once global interest vanished and it became an expensive toy instead of a way to generate massive revenue, yeah. instead of cutting their losses and moving on, why spend nearly 30 years trying to redeem this financial black hole? Actually, speaking of financial black holes, uh, here's a better question Why are you still playing Genshin? Why do we? Yeah, but what happened to the plane, though? I mean, so like, did they all crash? Like, did they still have them? Like, is technology better now? How long does it take now? Like, I'm kind of like now. Now I'm thinking about it. You know, I don't know if I could change my mind and start thinking about Genshin Impact. Play games that we hate. Why do you still go catch every new Terra Raid Pokemon in Scarlet and Violet despite actively berating the game on Reddit? Why do we spend two hours getting stepped on by Lady Maria, rage quit, decide to start something on our backlog, then go load up Bloodborne again? Well, Why I think that's fine, right? I mean, the thing is, you can always get mad at a game and then come back later on whenever you're not frustrated. I think that, that that's normal. But like, there's a difference between that and then people that actively resent a game and hate a game and play it regularly, like play it on a daily basis for hours. Like World of Warcraft has players like this. Now Diablo 4 has players like this. It's like somebody's addicted to putting their dick in a blender. The people that are, a lot of the people that are still playing WoW, they're piss drinkers and shit eaters. And it doesn't matter how bad the game is, they'll still eat it. And they'll come up with excuses, be like, ah, you know, like, it's mostly water. I mean, what's wrong with water? Well, I like the way it tastes. It, it tastes good. It's healthy. 
At least it's not, uh, at least it's not alcohol. It's sterile. Do you really need to do this? Why are you texting Destiny 2 Overwatch, again yeah. when it keeps leaving you on red? It has always fascinated me how we all seem to have at least one game that we play that we actively despise but simply cannot stop yeah. playing. For most of us- Yeah, I, I- Do I- Is there a game that I actively despise but I don't stop playing it? I think there are a lot of things about Diablo 4 that I don't like. But I think overall, like, I hope that it gets better. And the things that I don't like are now that I feel like the game is kind of at least improving a little bit, I feel like it's like a 55 45, where it's like 55% positive, 45% negative, maybe 60 40. But like, as soon as that threshold goes over and, you know, it goes into 50% plus negative, well, well, then we stop playing the game. Lost Ark? Well, Lost Ark is a great example. So let's look at Lost Ark. So I was frustrated with Lost Ark. I didn't like where it was at. And the last time I played was in June for like an hour. I just stopped playing because it was fucking stupid. Still playing Diablo 4 though? Yeah, but I played Lost Ark for like a year though. That's the thing. This is competitive games because we don't actually hate the game. Yeah. We hate our losing, losing. We, yeah, we hate, hate losing. losing. Yeah. These games are usually extremely fun in the beginning because we're actively improving. There is a lot to work on and our rising yeah. skill is noticeable. But once we iron out all the basics and we're hashing out smaller, more delicate things mm -hmm. like when the chance going for a harder combo to finish out a round or sideboarding for a specific card our opponents are playing, mm -hmm. we kind of plateau and suddenly improving isn't so easy anymore. When that happens, because critiquing ourselves is much more difficult, we might shift blame onto the mechanics or the connection. And I think this is why some folks spend the second half of their time with the game chasing the feeling they had during their first half. But this- well, I think there's also games that are just like, they're just fucked, right? Like PUBG was like this. It was a fucked game on release. But it was one of the best games out there, and people just played it anyway. They didn't care that it was bad. They didn't care that it was fucked, because they're like, well, yeah, it is fucked, but we still like it. It's just the tip of the iceberg, because it's not just it's a really great games, turn. Baby. It's not yeah. even just difficult games. There are people out there that feel this way about titles from every genre. You've read the video title. You know what we're here to discuss. Oh, yeah. I've even thought about going back and playing Dark Souls 2 just so I can remind myself about all the reasons I should hate it. I'm not kidding. I actually thought about doing it, but there's been a lot of games that have come out recently, so I just haven't really wanted to put in the time and, you know, go out and do this. It, but it's, yeah, it's like self-harm or something. Like, I, I'm, I was thinking to myself, like, wait, because I was like, oh, yeah, I should go do this, but, like, why? Why is there sometimes such a disparity in what we say mm -hmm. and what we do? Now, I've broken up this video into four cute little categories, and okay. somehow, hilariously, League of Legends fits into all of them. Jesus. I'm very See, happy. I, I feel so good that I didn't play that game. I do. I, I've never heard anybody tell a good story about League of Legends. Like, there's never a thing where, like, you know, it's like, oh, well... You know, things were going great and I was playing League of Legends. No, it's like I was depressed and I didn't shower and I, uh, you know, was biting my toenails off. And then I, I fucking play League of Legends and I hate myself. It's just like, I, I remember, I think it was Emmer who said that she took cold showers whenever she was playing League to punish herself for losing. And like, I understand that because I stabbed myself with a fork in the arm in Burning Crusade. But to be fair, the reason why is because I pressed Spell Reflect and I got cycloned with the Spell Reflect buff up. And I said, if this happens again, I'm gonna stab myself in the arm with a fork. I told my teammate, he says, okay. And it happened again. And then I followed up, I followed through. You know, I'm a man of my word. I stabbed myself in the arm with a fucking fork. But the reason why, it's like, that's not even my fault really, because the game was fucked up. But you don't see me going back playing Burning Crusade Arena whenever it came out in Classic, do you? Fuck no. Yeah, I don't play this game. 
So without further ado, let's hit the first category and talk about how the hate makes you stronger. Uh -huh. Some games are built to make you hate them, or at least it might feel that way. Competitive multiplayer games, games with brutal, unforgiving yeah. difficulties that bully you and beat you down into submission. The Binding of Isaac, Darkest Dungeon, Overwatch. I think that frustration mechanics are different than difficulty. Because there are things that are like, fr like for example, a frustration mechanic is like in Dark Souls 2, where you lose maximum health whenever you die. Like this is insult to injury, kicking you while you're down. It's like things are already going bad. Now let's make them worse. It's one of those situations. Watch Street Fighter, Souls games, Fear and yeah. Hunger, Magic at the Gathering. Just by simply reading these names out loud, someone watching this started sweating. It should go without saying that the pain these games make you feel comes from the fact that at some point you will do a fair amount of losing in them. Yeah. In fact, there will be play sessions where you probably spend more time losing than you do winning. And in the context of single-player games yeah. where you aren't facing a human opponent on equal terms, most people attribute the reason for that loss either to the game or to themselves. And because of this, yep. you might find yourself in a constant state of shifting blame. Mm -hmm. Maybe the first few times you die, you blame the game for being unfair, well, game and then you adjust and realize how you should actually handle that situation, which feels spectacular because you've overcome real adversity. But because there is always that struggle state before you fully understand how to handle certain enemies and scenarios, you are constantly re-bombarded with the thought, man, just when I thought I knew what I was doing. Now, of course, when you finally understand that next- For me, like, I feel like if I hate a boss at the beginning, I will always hate the boss. It's not like after I beat the boss, I will be like, you know what? That was a great boss. For me, like, I'll tell you, like, here's an example. Is that those two bosses in Remnant that I did the other day. Whenever I was fighting the Red Prince, I was telling you guys how much dick I sucked. And whenever I was fighting the Night Weaver, I was telling you how much dick that fight sucked. Even though I spent way more time on the Red Prince. That's the reason. And like, to me, I feel like there are things, and this video is not taking into account, there are fights that are fucking bullshit. And they're bullshit fights, they're annoying, they're badly designed, and they're not fair. And yeah, of course you can beat them, and there's ways to get around it. But they're fucking bullshit. And just because you beat them doesn't mean they make them any less bullshit. Did you like it though? No, I didn't. It was fucking garbage. It was a garbage fight. Bed of Chaos, yes. Be well, Bed of Chaos, I beat that one really fast. So like, I was like, okay, this is dumb. Who cares? Let's get through it. Demon of Hatred and Sekiro. I don't think I said it was a bad boss. I'm pretty sure I never said, like, Ishan, I never said it was a bad boss. I spent hours on that boss. There's a big difference, okay? The frogs and Jedi Survivor. The frogs and Jedi Survivor are objectively a bad boss. Here is how I can determine whether a boss is bad or not. Do the animations match the hitboxes? If the answer is no, then it's a bad boss. It's that simple. So, it was a bad boss. That's it. Fuck the frogs. Yes, I and I killed the fucking frogs. And now, after I beat them without every, up without every upgrade, without everything that I needed, I still fucking beat them. You know what? The boss sucked dick. It was badly designed. It was trash. The hitboxes were garbage. They weren't fair. And it was really, really bad. It was one of the worst fights in the entire game. Boss or a bit of platforming, you're back to signing autographs and kissing babies. And it's what pushes you to keep playing despite the hell you were raising five minutes yeah. ago. But games like these, in my opinion, want you to loathe them because that's what gives your victory meaning. They're both rewarding and maddening, but they are addicting because of something called a variable reinforcement schedule, it's which I've talked box. about before. Yeah. This is how slot machines keep you coming back. Yep. They don't reinforce every effort you make. They pay out very- I think that this is not necessarily true with games like Elden Ring and skill-based games like Cuphead, because it's not variable reinforcement at all. Because if it was variable reinforcement, like you don't see somebody go to Las Vegas and they do like a no hit run on a slot machine, right? Uh, I mean, you know, if, if they do a no hit run on a slot machine, usually you go to jail for that. So the difference with like Elden Ring and stuff like that is because they're 
like they're hard. Like it's, I, I think it's a lot different. Now, I think very, I think his argument makes a lot of sense, especially with like matchmaking in League of Legends or in Warzone, Fortnite, etc. You guys know that sometimes like it'll be like fucking late at night and you get queued into a lobby and you absolutely demolish the lobby and then you like, oh fuck, I'm gonna stay up a little bit later and I wanna queue again and then you queue again and then you get fucked and it's like obviously they have like, you know, this fucking hidden matchmaking rating to make it to where like you're always just like getting, you know, a little bit fucked, right? And so that's kind of, I think, where this makes a lot of sense and how it's very addictive. I think that with the single player games, like again, Cuphead, Elden Ring, Dark Souls, uh, I don't know the other examples he used, I forgot. Uh, but these are actually very much skill-based games. And if they weren't skill-based games, you wouldn't have people doing no-hit runs. But with multiplayer games, I think you absolutely have that addiction factor. A hundred percent. Very sparingly, which in practice is what most brutally difficult games do to the average player. Mm -hmm. You only win a small fraction of the time, but once you've hit the jackpot once, you're hooked. Constantly chasing that fleeting glory that you once had before. The difference, of course, is that your skill is the determining factor here and not yeah. your random probability. Yeah, but the fact exactly. remains that when you don't just get to win every time, it makes winning mean more and it keeps you coming back for a long, long time. Which yeah. is why Street Fighter has been cycling away at all of my time this summer. And certainly not for any other reasons. And this makes It's actually crazy how popular Street Fighter is. I feel like it's been one of the most popular fighting games that's come out in like the last 10 years. Question. What if we do add that third factor, another yeah. human player? Like I said earlier, the plateau exists. Eventually, once you hit a certain skill percentile of the player base, improving your own game doesn't come as quickly yeah. or as easily as it once did. And in fact, now, to stay competitive, you must confront a big, sweaty, mean, daunting reality. The meta. If there was a new yep. trick or technique like the Korean backdash and Tekken, wave dashing and melee, wave control and league, hyper tapping and Tetris, actually, just kidding, that's... Uh, that's that's rolling now. Rolling is the new meta. You see how this keeps moving? Bunny hopping and Counter-Strike, handling Oko and Magic the Gathering, other shit you've never heard of but want nothing to do with. You're going to want to have something to do with if you want to win at a high level. Artorius in Dark Souls. Well, this is kind of a problem that a lot of games have is whenever playing the meta isn't fun. Now, I think that's the issue is because every game has a meta. But the difference is that whenever playing a meta is an actively unfun type of gameplay. I think that a good example of this, or it's like, it's some sort of like super high APM thing, like bunny hopping in Apex. Like this was a really big thing whenever the game came out, I said it was garbage. Like anything that like requires super high APM that you have to do all the time, just because it provides like a minor advantage. Like these systems are usually pretty shitty and they make the game feel worse. So I think metas can be good and they can also be bad based off of how you achieve the meta. Yeah, StarCraft, well, I think StarCraft absolutely was like that. And that's why StarCraft died is because StarCraft, and it wasn't even really the meta, it was the, the skill cap in the game was so high that everybody that was playing the game was already so good and there was no way that you could really get there unless you played at like a massively high APM. You knew everything about the game. You had to multitask six different bases at the same time. Uh, and, and I think that's why people don't give a fuck about StarCraft anymore. And I think also that's why a lot of people were so happy that No Build Fortnite came out. Because building in Fortnite was that massive skill gap. And whenever you get rid of it, then there's a lot more people that can play. But in the end, it feels good to learn the uh, movement of Apex, no different than Cuphead or Dark Souls as far as learning the inputs and movements. Well, it is a lot different. So, like, for example, in Dark Souls, if you had to, like, imagine if, like, jumping backwards in Dark Souls was the fastest way to move in the game. Like, the way you have to move through the game is by jumping backwards slowly and, or sorry, quickly, and that would make you go through the game very quickly. I feel like a developer has a responsibility to prevent metas from emerging in games that aren't fun to play. And I, I, I like for Diablo 4, I'll give you a really great example. I think the Necromancer meta isn't fun to play. I think the, uh, like, number one, I think 
uh, like a bone, like what's it called? Uh, like bone shards or whatever the fuck it is. I don't know why I can't think of it. Uh, the bone attack is, is not really very fun to play. You're effectively playing an archer. And bone spear, yeah, bone spear. And then uh, blood mist is also not fun to play. Like neither of these builds are fun to play, but they are the numerically strongest build. So that's what you play. is the same opponent if you boot up Dark Souls in 2013 or in 2023. But Pretty human much, opponents yeah. in Dota 2 in 2013 are a far cry from human opponents in 2023. Because oh, humans yeah, evolve, way adapt, and innovate new ways to exploit games mechanics, creating an ever-moving standard if you want to remain truly competitive. If you don't, and you just want to enjoy playing with friends, that's wonderful. Please enjoy yourself. Oh yeah. But I think another. This is the same thing. Like you can see this really easily in like uh, in WoW. Like you go back and you look at like gladiator level players and burning crusade videos. They sucked. They sucked by today's standards. And it's the same thing probably with League or any other competitive game. Is like people just get better because like the total body of knowledge of a video game just increases over time reason these games provoke so much outward contempt is because you can dump a ton of time into them only to then blink and then realize how much work you still have to do to keep on winning. The metagame can leave you behind and trying to keep up and learn all the new yeah. tech if you aren't a pro can be exhausting. The game you boot up tonight... This is the problem that WoW has, by the way. Like uh, World of Warcraft PvP, especially. There are so many things happening and so many things going on that if you're not playing the game regularly and keeping up with it in like a lot of different ways, you're not going to know what's going on and you're gonna be lost. May only be an echo of what it was back when you first fell in love with it. You might spend 100 hours on a shooter, have a blast, take a yeah. break, and then spend another 300 trying to recapture the fun you had in the first 100. It's for this reason that I am very much a massive fan of the first year of a fighting game release. Yeah. That is when I have the most fun playing them. But eventually, I just have to hang out my boots because learning all the new tech and relearning my character's best buttons after balance patches is just too much to keep a firm grip on, yeah. for me at least. Yeah, However, the, there there becomes like all these like really weird combos. Like I think Smash Brothers Melee is a great example of this. Like there's probably like what half a dozen terms that have been invented for smash brothers melee just to kind of like explain what players are doing that's like obviously not supposed to be done like this isn't necessarily a great thing for a video game to evolve into for for many other folks who adore that game and can't keep up anymore walking away might be a little less easy yeah. especially since they've spent so much time with it in short they are simply i think this happens a lot especially with gotcha players i think that there's a lot of people like for example that tower of fantasy guy people like that uh genshin impact honkai star rail etc people are you know it's sunk cost fallacy except for literally sunk cost that's the big difference the creators oh, of the wow, wow players too, yeah. also in too deep. They had invested several years and exorbitant amounts oh, yeah. of money to make this project take off, pun very much intended. And when they ultimately landed no buyers, they had two options, mm -hmm. cut losses and move on, yep. or double down and try to make this work. You know how that story ends. They fell victim to the sun. Oh yeah, well that's what happened with Meta. Remember that? They tried to do the Metaverse and I respected Zuckerberg. You know, it's like if this guy, this guy is the captain of the ship and he's going to ride this ship down to the bottom of the fucking ocean. That was impressive, really. But still, you know, it didn't work out. Cost fallacy, which some of you I'm sure have he been had a vision. Yeah, I can respect started. the vision. In case you don't know what this is, the sunk cost fallacy is a little devil of an error that humans make. It's the tendency for people to stick with a course of action when in reality, giving up on it and accepting well, because it makes them feel stupid if they don't this is the reason why people don't like changing their mind is because if you change your mind on something then you were stupid you're not stupid are you no you're not stupid so why would you need to change your mind because changing your mind is predicated on the idea that you're dumb and you were dumb but no you're not fucking dumb so why would you change your fucking mind 
ignoring the it's current loss of time and resources would ultimately be best. It's quitting while you're ahead before things get ugly. It's, it's a quote. It's easier to convince a. It's easier to fool a man than to convince a man that he's been fooled. It's the same same base paradigm. You. You don't want to be this. <laughs> Bro, this this is you logging on again, bro. Like logging on again. Oh, it's gonna be different this time. Uh huh. Get ugly. Look at that. It's idiot. driving to Target only for to be out of pro controllers and then on a whim buying a new phone case and a soft pretzel since you already came all this way and spent the gas when you probably should have just saved your money. Yeah. It's caving on your diet because you've already ruined it by having Popeyes for lunch. May well, as well go wanna... out again for dinner since the day is shot, right? Yeah. It's continuing to play a game that you hate because at this point you've already sunk a hundred hours into it. You've got a rank, rare gear, things you've built, things yep. you're proud of, things you're not proud of, but quitting hmm. now would mean it all goes to waste, right? right? Can't stop I used now. the Concord as an example because I think it illustrates just how deep-rooted this fallacy really is in our psyches. No matter how big or mm -hmm. important a decision, even if it is a several billion pound endeavor, humans are still fallible to the sunk cost fallacy which means you are certainly at risk of falling for it when you're considering quitting a game that you've poured a ton of yourself into. And this is as true for competitive games as it is for really any game you can play. Whether you're chasing nostalgia with Pokemon and are trying really hard not to notice- Well, it's like with Honkai Star Rail. Sometimes I'll think to myself, do I wanna do my dailies today? And it's like, well, I can't, I've been doing my dailies every day. If I don't do them today, then I'm missing out on it. And so it's like, I kind of have to do them today because I did them yesterday. And so it's like, I, I, you know, I've gotten this far. And so it's like, well, I don't want to not do them now. I mean, like, it's been a while. Yeah, so it's like, oh, fuck. It's quirks or just aren't feeling FF16 for whatever yeah, you reason. Have to. You're already 30 hours in. Yeah. Can you just walk away now? You couldn't well. walk away from <laughs> Uh, from Target, what we don't like to ironic. do is admit that our effort has been wasted, and because of this, past see that's what's so weird to me is like people think that it, it it's weird or they've been their time is wasted if they played a video game and then they didn't enjoy it. I don't think that at all, man. Like if I played a game and I enjoyed the game, if I played it for like three hours and then I quit the game. I'm still happy. Yeah, I, I don't ever feel like the time was wasted. Because you know what I think? I think all of the time that I've spent playing video games collectively over my whole life was a massive waste of time. Yes, I've learned some things through playing video games, etc. But it's just a fucking video game, and at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. What about Diablo 4? Especially Diablo 4. Well, you're working? Yeah, but it's like streaming is like a different thing, right? It's I'm talking about playing games. Playing games for myself. Assuming that it's not being monetized or something like that. At a certain point, it's often easier to just stick it out and see a game through to its end instead of yeah, putting it out of Yeah, you might as well play the game for 20 years until the server shut down. Misery. Even if it's an absolute drag and we yeah. still feel like we've wasted our time playing it when we finally do finish. Well, this is what happened. Yeah, this is exactly it. Thank God that's over. I've had so many times whenever I play a video game and that's the last thing I think. Yeah, thank God. Now there's something interesting that I came across when I was researching for this video. Mm -hmm. A lot of people explain that discrepancy between their disdain for a game and their strangely hefty playtime by saying that if you don't do that, tons of people will hit you with the, well, how can you say you hate it when you haven't even finished it? How can your opinion be valid if you haven't given it a fair shot? Which well, that's what people said a lot with Actman and his review of Diablo 4. And I push back on that. And it's like, obviously, if you didn't play the end game, you can't give feedback on the end game. But if you've played an hour of a game, you can absolutely give feedback on the game. And I think sometimes, and in a lot of times even, that feedback matters even more than the people that are playing it for 100 hours. Because that, like, if people are getting filtered in hour one, they're never going to get to hour 100. Which leads us to... You want me to do I simultaneously now? have a fair bit of pity 
and respect for the folks that go out of their way to finish games simply so that they can say, now that that's done, I can fully articulate why I hate this game. Yeah, I've even thought about going back and playing Dark Souls 2 just so I can remind myself about all the reasons I should hate it. I'm not kidding. I actually thought about doing it, but there's been a lot of games that have come out recently, so I just haven't really wanted to put in the time and, you know, go out and do this. It, but it's, yeah, it's like self-harm. Yeah. Yeah. I came across this because I found an old Kotaku article about how a ton of people were requesting refunds for games after playing them for 50 plus hours. Which is like calling the waiter over to your table and asking for a refund on your empty plate because your steak dinner wasn't very good. Uh -huh. Some of the comments are gold though. I had no clue people did this, but it made me realize that even yeah. if I can usually tell very quickly if I'm oh. going to vibe with the game, and in fact I often may be a little too quick to judge, a lot of people do genuinely feel like they can't fully decide how they feel about a title until they're sufficiently nose deep in the sauce. They need I think that's fine. Yeah, I think that's fair, right? It's like you want to give it a try and, and see what it's like and then decide after that. That's That's totally good. Probably similar whenever you date somebody for a long time then realize you hate them. If you guys have that ha- I've never had that happen. To wait and see if the story picks up. They need to know if the combat is surprisingly deep once you get to some of the bigger challenges. They need to discover if they find themselves thinking about the game when they're at work or at school. That, a lot of people may- Thank you. That is the fucking benchmark right there. Are you at Taco Bell and thinking about the game? If yes, then it's a good game. If no, it's mid not know that they hate that game until hour 50. Especially yeah. if it's a game or a series that other people are constantly in a hyped up frenzy about. Have you ever been playing something and then said to yourself, what does everyone see in this? Because to me, so far, it's just, it's just been yeah. fine. There's got to be something I'm missing here, but I don't want anything spoiled, so I'm just going to keep going. There's I'm sure there have been games, I'm trying to think about an example of this, there have been games that I've played it for like 40 hours or 20 hours. And then I'm just like, okay, that's enough. I'm done. That's it. Yeah, I'm not sure. I, 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 I'm trying to think. Like, a kind of Hollow Knight was like that for me. Because I played it for a while. I didn't, I thought it was okay. okay I'm going to play it. People really like the game a lot. And I just couldn't get into it. I don't know what to say. I could not get into the game. And so I stopped playing it. There's this thing called informational influence, and you've certainly felt it plenty of times before. Mm -hmm. Imagine you're walking through a public place and you see a small crowd of people gazing up at the sky and pointing. They're really baffled about whatever is up there. As you walk by them, what do you do? You look up. Probably look up and see what they're looking at, yeah, right? Yeah, of course. I found this clip of these college students doing this, and it's hilarious watching people fight the urge to see what they're missing. But finding out what we're missing is what makes informational influence work. In mm -hmm. ambiguous situations, we typically perceive the actions or beliefs of the majority. This is why everybody, people need, can I, I please, please, I need the middle-aged balding man to tell me that my purchase was valid. Oh, I need it. Oh, please tell me I didn't waste my money. Please tell me. Please validate me. It's like, and, and there were people that were saying, like, it's crazy how, like, if a game isn't popular and people don't like it, people will actually stop playing it because other people don't like it. It's like they're bots. I can't believe it, but it's true. Like people will be like, so are we gonna play this? So so is this, should I play this game? Am I am I good to play this game yet? Like what, what the fuck do you, what the fuck's wrong? What the fuck is wrong with you? What do you mean are you good to play? What is this? They're NPCs, yeah, they're waiting for new programming. Holy shit. You can't criticize this behavior when it's literally built into our DNA as a survival mechanism? Yes, you absolutely can criticize this fucking behavior, okay? Because we're not, we are, listen, there are a lot of things that are survival mechanisms that people don't do anymore, okay? Like, there's plenty of them, like stealing, for example. 
There's plenty of things that, oh, well, you know, if you were a monkey, you would do this. Well, yeah, but we're not monkeys. Be an accurate source of knowledge, which has definitely never caused the spread of misinformation before. Mm -hmm. If you've never played a Zelda game before and this many people think Tears of the Kingdom is fantastic, it can't be bad, right? Yeah. I think this is another big reason why we often keep playing games that we hate. Socially, we know that that many people can't be crazy, right? What? No. I don't even think it's a possibility. It's a fact. Like, everybody knows most people are fucking dumb. That's just how it is. It's the opposite. Yeah. Like, I would say, like, 80% of people are really stupid. Like, and, and especially, like, I, I will I will listen to some of the things that some people say. Oh, my God. Mmm, ice cream so good. Gang, gang. Yeah. Is it George? Uh, you, you guys like quotes? We'll get another one. Uh, you know, actually, how about two quotes? A good argument for a good argument against democracy is a five minute conversation with the average voter. And another one. Think about just how dumb the average person is and then realize half of them are dumber than that. Yeah, I usually, he said crazy, not stupid. Well, what's the difference? Like, most people are st most people that are crazy are stupid, and there are some people that are stupid who are crazy. I feel like they usually go, they go hand in hand. And they're usually interchangeable in a lot of cases. People call somebody who's stupid crazy, or people still call somebody who's crazy stupid. What do they know that you don't? And so you keep playing mm -hmm. and looking for answers. In some cases, it's worth your time. In others, it is not. Yeah. But if you're chasing the same experience everyone else had and it doesn't quite do for you what you were hoping, then all of that time is regretfully gone and there's this game no looks getting good. it back. We've talked a lot today about if the game you can't walk away from is actually bad. I don't view time that you spend playing a video game that you hate as time wasted because it gives you more perspective on what you like. Like, for example, whenever I put my hand on something that's like really hot, I have learned something. Don't put your hand there. But what if the game is brilliant? What if you adore that game? You've recommended it to everyone you yep. know, you have a Triforce tattoo, Ooh. you've named your firstborn child Cornifer, and then one day... Corn what the fuck? You notice a flaw. One day, you find yourself a little irked by how tedious your ninth playthrough is. One day, you realize that you and this game are actually just an... One of my favorite song lyrics of all time comes from an old Rupert Holmes song, Escape, the Pina Colada song. I was tired of my lady, we'd been together too long, like a worn out recording of a favorite song. And I think it's a fantastic line because it perfectly encapsulates, not just in the context of relationships, but in all things in life, how too much of a good thing can sour that thing for you. No. Steak every day. I've had Chipotle almost three days in a row now. Probably, you know what I'm going to have tomorrow? Chipotle. It's good. Every day I eat steak. About steak every hour? Well, I'm not hungry. Yep. And then every day I drink Dr. Pepper and Pepsi. You're a cave dweller? Yep. I have it for multiple years? I have. I do know what he's talking about, though. In 2004, Kanye West just released College Dropout. I, th I think it was, was it Graduation or College Dropout. I forgot which one. And Gold Digger was the popular song. And on the radio, every fucking day going to school, we would listen to Gold Digger by Kanye West. And it got to the point to where the beat would literally give me a fucking headache. 
And so, yes, I understand. I had a decent I was in ninth idea grade. what I was going to write about when I came up with this topic, even before I posted this mm -hmm. question for you guys. And, you know, you've seen responses to it throughout this video, but something I did not anticipate writing about was comments like this, pointing out that when you play something so mm -hmm. long that you become intimate with every little detail of the game, you start noticing cracks, flaws, idiosyncrasies that annoy the hell out of you. Maybe it's the- Well, this is, there are people that, I've always said that there are people that look for what's right in the world, and there are people that look for what's wrong. And there are these fucking people, and they spend their whole life worrying and thinking about, oh my God, am I wasting my time? Am I doing the right thing? Am I, oh my fuck, I, there is nothing to me that is more insufferable than people like that. Like, I'm the kind of person that if, like, I don't know, if I can sleep and it's not hot and I can get on a computer, everything is pretty much fine. The house can be burning down besides that. But can I get on the computer? Okay, I can. Yep. Great. Do we have running water? Nope. Okay, well, that's fine. We'll just go down to the store. We'll deal with it. It's, it's okay. Right? Like, I don't sit around and microanalyze my life and think about all the things that went wrong. Because I know people that do this. And you know what? None of them are happy. And you know what? Sometimes I'm not happy. I'm not happy that all things are not going the way that I want them to go. Life is not perfect. It's very upsetting. But th that's just how it is. Yeah, it it's just fuck. Out of touch take? No, it's not out of touch at all. It's the opposite. It's you have to be happy with what you fucking have because you're never going to have everything that you fucking want. No game's ever going to be perfect. The Elden Ring isn't perfect. This boss is dog shit. The boss is completely designed around this one fucking ability, and if you took this ability out of the game, the boss would be a fucking joke and it would have been forgettable. That's the truth. But you know what? Elden Ring is still one of the greatest games of all time, and I still love it, and in 20 years, I'm still going to be playing Elden Ring. And that's it. So... And it's fine. You have to accept it that it's not fucking perfect. This is like, guys, it's like a, a girl streamer posts a photo without makeup and then guys are, or she, she goes on stream without makeup and they're, they don't, they're like, oh, I don't want to watch her anymore. It's like, oh, fuck. Bro, what did you think? What were you thinking? What was this? Right? And it happens all the time. I've seen it many, many times. And it's kind of funny to see because how stupid people are, but it's also fucking sad. So the truth is, like, nothing in life is perfect. And there are people, as I said, there are people that try to make, they try to see the good, and there are people who try to see the bad. And if you want to be happy in life, if you see somebody who's the kind of person that sees the bad... Hire them for fixing things. And that's it. It's Certain really not that easy. It actually is. See, it's it, it th what the crazy thing is that a lot of things in life are very easy, but they're hard to do. So they're easy to understand. It's like, oh, I, I'm fat. I, I'm, I, I weigh more than I want to weigh. Okay, well then stop eating as much food and exercise. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> look, I mean, guys, all right, hey, hey, whoa. Well, let's go ahead, all right, all right, let's, all right, let's take a step back here and talk about society's expectations. Okay, there's always a fucking reason why people can't do something. That's it. It's so easy. 90% of people fail at it. Yeah. Yeah, it's simple. Yeah, it's simple, but it's difficult. People see a glass half full or a glass half empty. Exactly. Yep. Compartmentalizing a type of person is undesirable to be avoided. It's this kind of pussy shit, though. I do it all the time. And I'm not, a, I'm not ashamed that I'm not sorry. There are categories of people, and these are not racial categories. Um, these are categories of people before somebody tries to take this in some other way that if I see somebody is like this, I'm like, okay, well, uh, you know, I will keep you at arm's reach and that's it.
and I don't need to be any closer to you and you can stay over there I'll stay over here and everything's going to be totally fine that's it and there are people I will categorize them like that and that's it like for me for example right people who are hostile and rude to people that they feel like are beneath them or people that think in terms of other people being beneath them if somebody is like that I will keep them at our at, at an arm's distance that doesn't mean I'm never going to interact with them because I can deal with anybody but I'm not going to try to get any any closer than that behavioral categories yes exactly people that overreact to things I've had girlfriends that overreact to things I'm single now that's it. I don't like dealing with people that overreact. That's it. So if somebody deals does that or acts crazy or gets really mad about something that's stupid, well, then they're stupid and fuck them. That's it. on a boss are unavoidable under yeah, the right I, circumstances. Maybe absolutely. Maybe the game economy is kind of wonky. Maybe it's that a particular stretch of the game always drags and doesn't really add anything. Maybe it's yep. that there are certain strategies or weapons or cards are just obsolete in the presence of other alternatives mm -hmm. and don't really ever contribute to the gameplay. Maybe you should play something else. Yeah. We've talked about variable reinforcement schedules and sunk cost fallacies and games that make you rage, but somehow... This is the one that's the most heartbreaking for me mm -hmm. to think about. Because it's not that you keep playing because you think eventually it'll get good, or that you feel like you're in too deep to cut your losses, or that the hatred makes winning mean more. It's not really hatred at all. It's just something beautiful, slowly wilting. It's the realization that something you love so deeply is flawed, and that you'll never get to have that magical first playthrough again. Is See, it, that's what it's really about. It's about the first playthrough. And you know what? I remember I was depressed whenever I killed Godfrey in Elden Ring. Because I killed him. He's the first Elden Lord. I'm standing right in front of the big yellow tree. There's a giant door. I think I'm about to beat the game. Right? It's kind of obvious I'm about to beat the game. And I was sad, bro. I was so fucking sad. I was like, oh my God, it's over. It, it's like, and this is it. And it's like for weeks at that point, I've been playing through the game. But wait, there's more. But wait, there's more. And then there wasn't. And it's like, it's so hard to accept that. But I think whenever you do accept it, you can appreciate it for what it is. I felt the same. Yes. Gwen was like that for sure. Honestly, <laughs> I was so glad that game was fucking over. Whenever I played Dark, I was like, bro, this has been the worst experience of my fucking life streaming this Dark Souls 1 game. Like, this is, thank God, this is the last guy. Oh, fuck. Yes. All right. It's over. Better to leave the game once you're done and move on to something yeah. else, so that you can. Do you want to hear another one? I only watch usually Fellowship of the Ring because I don't. I don't like watching Return of the King because it makes me come to terms with the fact that Lord of the Rings ended. Yeah. Remember it fondly or to indulge yourself with the experience over and over mm -hmm. until you're absolutely sick of it. Which I think weaves nicely into the last thing I want to talk about today. What do we take away from all of this? When do we know it's time to walk away from a game? And the answer honestly depends entirely on you. I think it's important to understand what you are looking for when you play a game. What are you chasing? If it's to be competitive in a meta that seems to have left you in the dust, it's up to you to decide if it's worth your time to catch up and then keep up. Yeah. Do you love the pursuit of getting better that much? Exactly. Are you still playing that gotcha game? Yeah. Uh, here we go. Because you're afraid to miss out on the new content and feel like you have too much time and money invested? Or yeah, you I mean, you've already spent $15,000 on a phone game. So if you don't spend another $2,000... 
you're really thinking about, am I wasting? Because then you would be wasting $15,000. But if you only waste $2,000, then the $15,000 that you already spent isn't really wasted because you're still playing it. You see how it is? Yeah, Kafka's coming up. The new Kafka banner is coming up on Honkai Star Rail, by the way. Play because you yeah. adore the community. Yeah, imagine not having that. The story Man. That's swept you off your feet. That, are you that, playing this because be you want to understand the buzz? Or are you playing this because you're genuinely captivated by your time with it? Is the victory worth what the game is putting you through? Are you still having fun on this playthrough? Or are you just trying to recapture the wonder of your first steps in this world? Mm -hmm. Is it time to avert your gaze to let this flower wilt and go find a new horizon? I don't the think it's letting the flower wilt. I think it's giving the flower to somebody else or not over, like, it's like you have to have a healthy relationship with things and having a healthy relationship with them isn't coveting them and like fucking obsessing over them like Gollum and the One Ring. It's being able to see them for what they are, appreciate them, and have them be part of your life without them being your life. The answer is up to you, of course. And I think as I'm writing these... Don't over... Mind, yeah, you overwater the flower, really it fucking dies. About. Letting go. Knowing when to move on. And it's not lost on me how first world problem -y this sounds. You know, a man has crisis over when to stop playing games. I get it. I'm the same guy who made a video about having too much to play. Oh, poor me. But I, yeah, it's hard. This is something that real people clearly Too many video with. games. And I think it speaks more to their nature as humans than it does to the games they play. What have you not let go of? What are you waiting on? Where is your sunk cost? What is your concord? Whatever it is, I hope you find what you're looking for soon, even if it means you have to look somewhere else entirely. So if you love what you're playing, I hope you never hate it. And if you hate what you play, I hope you love hating it. Yeah, I think that's pretty fucking accurate. I would say so for sure. I think this is Thank a... You. Thanks for watching, and I hope you got something out of this one. I, I think this that was a, that's a good way to end it. I really did not that was like great. when yeah, I started it, yeah, but I'm somehow it. really happy with now that I finished it. <laughs> I think I need a break. As always, if you like what you see here, be sure to like and subscribe for more deep dives like this one, and let me know in the comments what game you have a love-hate relationship mm -hmm. with. If you have a love-love relationship with the show and want to help make it possible, be sure to give my Patreon a look. For a dollar a month, you can get access to bonus content, early yeah, access, creative really well input, put weekly together. updates, and even your name in the credits like you see here. Links down below. You might even get your name read out loud like this month's featured patrons. Crescent Wolf 879 Oh, that's smart. Naru. I Cello. remember back in, in WoW, uh, whenever McConnell and I would read the names and say the names of the people that would trade us gold, we got way more gold. Vandervet. I hope I pronounced yeah. that correctly. It was like a, yeah, it was a big thing. Neutrino, it's the same thing boy. with subs. Like streamers that Praise. read subs get way more subs. Queen Dopamine. He said my name. Wait, what? Brandon Potts. Wait, that's me. Oh my and god. Tyler Matthew Bower. Thanks again for watching. Take care and please have yourself a damn good one. Would you guys watch a video about this? Isn't that show supposed to be really popular, that Oshinoko show? People have recommended me to watch that. I heard it was weird. Maybe I should watch it. Either way, this video is really fucking good, dude. I haven't I haven't seen this guy's channel before, but this is amazing. I'll link you guys the video. Make sure to give it a like. Hopefully this guy makes more videos like this. I think that also, like, a lot of people get too invested into... They get too invested into a game, and the game becomes more than a game to them. And I think that in terms of times where this is healthy and times where this isn't healthy, there's, like, a 10 to 1 ratio where it's not healthy. Most people that get over-invested into a game to where, like, they're so emotionally upset or angry or something like that, this is not good. Grown men watching shows for 10-year-old girls. You realize your name is Femboy Wow, right? 
I just wanted you to keep that in mind. So anyway, uh, yeah. So I guess they don't make the Concords anymore either, right? Like the airplanes, like that's kind of like a done thing. Damn, that's too bad. Like if there's only three hours to go across the world, that'd be nuts.